So today we're going to move the photo processing location from here to uh, our new storage location. So yeah, we're going to pick up the photo enlarger that I got here and move on over there. As you can see, this is a kind of a cramped space, but yeah, I used to be here to uh, enlarge my photos. It's a Meoptax Somat 5, and I think I have uh, some Carl Zeiss optics down here. Anywho, this has to come out so we can uh, move it up to the new place. Here we go, that's all the stuff carried into the basement, and now um, let's release the hound from the dog. No, release the dog from the car, that's what we're doing. There we go. Ah, yeah. So here is gonna be the photographical corner. Equipment. There's a shower here. That's good. There is also a uh, sink here. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, I thought I had a coat hanger in here. It turns out I do not have a coat hanger. So uh, I'll just hang the jacket up here somewhere. Anyhow. So I would say the most important thing to think about when you're looking for a location to build your dark room is that uh, it be dark, of course, and uh, this happens to be a basement, which is perfect because there's no windows in here. So there is no risk that the sunlight gets in here by accident. There is, it's also important that you have access to a sink and running water uh, because you're going to use a lot of running water when you are uh, processing your films and photographies. Another important thing to think about is that you have some kind of heating in the place where you're gonna be. You probably want to have somewhere around 21 to 25 Celsius, I would say. That's what I usually work with. So that's the important things to think about when you're looking for a space to turn into a dark room. So it's not a big space, uh, but it's, I believe it's gonna be enough for uh, what we're doing. Let me see here if I can. Yep. Here is literally the table in one corner. This table we're gonna turn into uh, where we have the photo enlargers. I'm gonna put two of them there. And then this shelf over here, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna put chemicals down there. So let's get to the setup then. Of course, I'm gonna be playing some music here because uh, I do have a gramophone and uh, I like gramophone music, so. Here is the photo enlarging corner all set up. Let me show you close. So this is the enlarging corner. A pretty basic setup. This machine over here, it takes only uh, 35 millimeter negatives. And uh, this one over here takes both 35 and 120. It, you can like adjust, let me show you. You can adjust this plate here. So that's the largest size of negative you can come in and now it's set to that, so this is very good. And since I do photography in 120, it's good to have. Then I have this, it's a preview thing for uh, 135 millimeter negatives. And of course for the best result when uh, enlarging pictures, I got this timer. I would uh, suggest anybody who's uh, attempting to do dark room work to get one of these. It makes the job a lot easier than switching the machines on off by hand and then counting or timing it in, on a watch. So I also have this here. You know, this is a this is an antique, of course. This is very very old Var Agfa Vario Scope 60. Uh, I might put this up too as well in the future because you can make enormously huge pictures with this one. Yeah, so that was the photo enlarging corner done. So now let's move over to this side of here. So we're gonna put up the chemical trays and stuff we need, and we're also gonna organize uh, this shelf over here so we can find what we need when we do need it in the future. That's that so far. 
pretty happy with the result. So I'm gonna give you the tour. Yep, yep, yep. So we start over here. We have the enlargement corner with the extra enlarger, the easels to hold the photographic paper on place while you are uh, enlarging it. This is to find the grain in the photo so you get the sharpest image possible. This little thing here. The timer, of course. Previewer. There's some unshot uh, rolls of film there. It's 120 film. We we'll go over here. Here's a box of random stuff, mostly flashes and different, uh, yeah, these things you put outside a camera to protect it. I'm gonna have to organize up that later. Then I have my assortment of photographic papers. Small on the top, larger on the bottom. Then we come to the camera bag uh, shelf, where I kept keep my various uh, camera bags. Of course, you can just grab one here, whichever one you uh, think is the best for the job, and then you go up one shelf and you grab a camera. And for those of you who are a bit uh, photo aficionado, there are some good stuff here. See, we have, for example, here, we have a Canon F1, a uh, Los Angeles 1984 Olympic edition. This is a very nice camera. What else do we have? Yeah, Pentax, Canon there, Koenig and Shinon cameras. And over this corner, we're going into the Minolta corner here. Of course, various assortments of lenses. Uh, they didn't all fit on one shelf, so here's more lenses up here. Then we come into old 120mm cameras. They're all loaded up with film as we speak, by the way. So I gotta shoot up those rolls. Then we go some uh, compact cameras. Yeah, some from the 60s, 70s and forward. This is a Voigtlander. This is a nice one. I like this. Yeah, then we go with Cine 3 with a... Uh, a Helios 44 lens. It's a really nice lens for portrait, portrait photography. And behind that is another Zenit. Old Russian cameras. Yeah, and here's a Jashika and a Halina. This was my grandfather's camera, so... What else? Did I miss anything else interesting here? Yeah, this Pentax here. Also got a Heli Helios 44-2 on it, so uh, this is a really good portrait camera, this one right here. And then we move over to, uh, yeah, the chemical corner. Here I have some films that are gonna be processed. The, the tongs to grab the photo paper when it's in the chemicals, various types of uh, Patterson tubes. The gramophone, music always available, and then yeah, more boxes of random assortments of stuff. Yeah, of course. Uh, the box full of uh, photographic chemicals. Next time we come up here, I'll show you how to uh, process the 35 millimeter film and then how to uh, put it over to the enlarger, enlarge the photos, use the chemicals and uh, do it on the paper. So stick with it for the next one and hang in there and, you will s and I'll teach you how to do it. That's the easiest way to say it. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. The most important parts. I can always also recommend go get some books, read up, because knowledge is invaluable. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I believe, um, I believe that's it. Welcome back next time.